Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking a little bit more about the galaxy and the black hole known as M87. The recent image basically made the headlines, the image of the first ever black hole that we were able to capture using a few radio telescopes, but we haven't really discussed um, the galaxy where it was found and we also haven't really discussed the size of the black hole um, compared to, say, our own solar system. Now, today I wanted to do just that. I wanted to show you how tremendously massive this black hole really is, but also wanted to go on a bit of a trip across the M87. So first of all, this is kind of where it's located in the night skies, um, if you were to look at it from Earth, and it's relatively challenging to see it. So we do need to actually use a telescope to try to find it, um, and actually there it is. Uh, there is M87, and this is kind of what it would look like if you had a relatively powerful telescope and looked at the direction of constellation Virgo, um, and this is at a distance of about 53 to maybe 54 million light years away from us. And just to give you a comparison, um, this is what the Andromeda galaxy looks like. You can actually kind of see it uh, pretty well, and this is at a distance of maybe about 25 times less than um, M87. So this here is in the local region, a local group of galaxies. However, M87 is not. It's actually kind of far away from us. But M87 is obviously a little bit more interesting, mostly because of two things. One is that this unusual elliptical galaxy has a tremendously powerful, super ultra massive black hole in the middle that we got to see. And second of all is that it's actually um, an active galaxy. It's a galaxy that has an active galactic nuclei that produces a relatively large um, astrophysical jet that's about 5,000 light years in length. So first of all, let's do one thing here. Let's go and find that black hole in Space Engine because um, we are not really given its location. So we do need to kind of improvise a little bit and look for the central region of this galaxy. And I think the challenge right now is actually going to be finding the center of this galaxy. Not because it's so massive and so big, but because it's elliptical. It's actually really difficult to figure out where the center is. So I'm going to have to travel around here a little bit until it looks like we're in the center. Now, um, for the most part, I think I'm headed toward this location right there in the middle. And um, I'm just basically guessworking here. And what I'm really looking for is a globular cluster looking object. Now, um, this is because we believe that the central region of any supermassive galaxy, or really any massive galaxy, will usually contain this central region with um, some um, globular cluster looking uh, formations. And then in the center of that, there's going to be a supermassive black hole. So right now, I actually do see a lot and a lot of globular clusters, but they're very difficult to tell apart simply because of all of the brightness that we are experiencing here. Okay, I don't really know if I'm headed the right way, but it looks like it is because this does look like it's a center of something. We're going to be slowly trying to approach whatever is in the middle of this. And as you can see, uh, this galaxy has a lot of stars. The actual mass, um, we believe, is about 200 times more than our own Milky Way. Uh, which means that this is a huge, huge, huge place. There's a lot of stuff here, a lot of um, gas, a lot of different stars and black holes, and it even has a lot more um, globular clusters as well. So this sort of looks like the middle, and there is something really, really bright in the middle. So let's go and see if this is something interesting. Basically, I'm looking at whatever this thing is, and um, wow, this is a really bright object. So I don't think this is an actual black hole just yet, but it does seem to be some sort of a group of stars, which usually uh, means that there is something really, really massive in the middle. And that something massive can potentially be a black hole. And I have a, I have a pretty good feeling that this is actually it. So, all right, so this is what the central regions usually look like. And for M87, it's going to have a lot more stars here. Now, remember, we've discovered that the M87 uh, supermassive black hole actually is responsible for absorbing something like 90 uh, masses of Earth every single day. So it's basically eating up a lot of these objects. Uh, a lot of mass here goes into the black hole and then turns into astrophysical jets. 
But finding a black hole here, even though it should be pretty obvious, is still pretty challenging. Now luckily I do have a lot of experience in space engines, so we should be able to find it um, any second now. I think it should be somewhere around here. Um, there's a pretty good indication it's going to be in the center of this region. And usually they just kind of actually pop up because um, originally when you just start the simulation, the supermassive black holes actually are not rendered just yet. They only start being rendered once you get close enough to the region. So this makes finding them a little bit more challenging. But we should be almost there. Um, and somewhere right here, there's going to be an object that's really bright. And there it is. Look at that. Perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. All right. So this is the supermassive black hole that we actually got to observe with the EHT telescope uh, network. But unlike the real image, um, it doesn't seem to be actually as big and also as powerful as the one in real life. As a matter of fact, this seems to be a little bit less massive. Now, um, obviously, there's no astrophysical jet here either. So that's a bit disappointing. But that's essentially it. This is kind of what the uh, simulated version of M87 black hole looks like. Now, interestingly, this is at least 100 times less massive than what we've discovered. So the simulated version in this uh, simulation in Space Engine is not really accurate. But the image itself is similar to what you see here. This is actually what the accretion disk would look like. So anyway, so how big is this thing? Well, let's go into Universe Sandbox, open up our own solar system, the favorite and the best solar system, star system that we know, and basically what we're going to do is place this black hole right next to or a little bit maybe on the outskirts of our own solar system just to see what happens and just to give you a comparison of actual size. So to do this, I actually am going to leave this central region because I don't want things to get destroyed just yet. And we're going to go um, to a region of space somewhat farther away, um, essentially where the Voyager probes are right now. Specifically, we do have a simulation here that shows us where Voyager 1 and also Voyager 2 probes are. So let's basically uh, place this black hole somewhere here a little bit farther away from where Voyager is. And so what we're going to do, and I actually want to make this a little bit easier to see. So we're going to change the background color here. Uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to place the um, black hole here. This is about maybe double the distance of where the Voyager probes are. And now we're going to change this to represent the realistic simulation of what M87 is like. By changing its mass accordingly, and this is about six and a half billion masses of the sun. So if you were to compare the actual size here, as you can see, this thing is humongous. This right here to your left, that's essentially all of our planets inside our solar system. Neptune is right here. This is the farthest planet. And this is basically M87. Don't forget that this black hole also has a really, really, really large accretion disk. And from what we've detected, and I'm actually going to change the background here again, just so you can see this easier. It's uh, accretion disk extends to approximately 0.4 light years away from uh, the center. So these particles here actually represent this accretion disk. And as I zoom in here, you'll notice that this is where M87 is. And right there on the outskirts are the planets of our uh, solar system. So this thing is humongous. Now, obviously, if I kind of let go of everything here in the simulation and let it run, everything falls into the black hole almost instantly. This was only like a few days. And that's because this thing is tremendously powerful. Now, remember, it absorbs about 90 masses of Earth every day. So it actually takes it something like four days to eat the mass amount of Saturn. And in about 10 years, this ultramassive black hole absorbs mass equivalent of our sun. So that is a tremendously powerful object. And of course, it produces the ultra powerful astrophysical jets that are close to about 5000 light years long. And it just so happens that one of them is sort of pointing almost exactly at us. So in some sense, we're kind of lucky that it's not pointing directly at us because these things are so powerful that they could maybe cause a few um, extinction events. And because this black hole is actually the closest ultramassive black hole to us, 
it may one day cause something here on Earth if it just happens to be pointing at us. Or maybe it has in the past. We don't really know because we don't have enough evidence. But anyway, hopefully this video kind of gave you an idea of how ridiculously massive this object is and how extremely powerful this black hole is as well. And this is why it was chosen to be one of the targets for the Event Horizon Telescope, mostly because it's so powerful that it actually sends really powerful radio waves toward us um, that has been discovered back in the 60s. But anyway, on that note, that's basically it. This is how big and massive this thing is. And this is why the image that we discovered is actually pretty amazing. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Space out.